worst night's sleep ever. Perhaps the worst place to stay overnight. Hi, I'm Daz and she's B, and we're on a 12 week road trip round France with our boys and our greyhound Sammy. Join us as we explore the history, beauty and fun we can squeeze in while getting to grips with the challenges of working and home educating on the road as a family in France, living a life less ordinary as we escape in the motorhome. Morning. You know, it's funny. I just had the alert come up on my phone for Green Bin Day back in the UK and funny enough, Green Bins featured as one of the many, many events of last night. So we arrived here quite late, about quarter past ten. This particular park up is free. Uh, there are services. It's right in the middle of the town, which is what was attractive. But also we had an option B that was just a little bit further back down the track, but it was slated for being in between, sandwiched between a main road and uh, a railway. And that sounded awful. But this also handy had a few pictures. We got here and in the dark, there was one pitch left and we managed to squeeze ourselves in. And a guy from a Spanish van in front helped us line up. It's a little bit on the wonk, nose down, but I couldn't be bothered to get the ramps out. We <laughs> were so tired. Anyway, that was the least of our worries. I think we finally went to bed just after 11 and there was still quite a bit of traffic but we expected that to die down which it didn't we have this side of us a road we have just over there where my finger is uh, a main road and then of course this, this side of the van there's that bin again this side of the van there's also another road which last night had various emergency service vehicles running down it uh, Boyo races. As if that wasn't enough, I think around about one in the morning, uh, Phoenix developed a huge pain in his side. Thoughts of appendicitis and having to go to hospital again. Eventually, we managed to calm him down. He went back to bed, and then. Bonjour. Look at this. I love it. They're tidying up. We've been seeing through the council people out this morning uh, cutting grass, and now we've got people around us tidying up. You never see this where I come from. Maybe I'm not up early enough, I don't know. He needs danger money going down there. And what also happened in the night was the bin was collected. But collected at about quarter past four. And as it's there, it felt like we were, <laughs> and with the guys and the, and the rubbish truck and the pneumatics and the people talking and the bins being lifted, B and I felt like we were in the middle of like a car, car breaker's yard about to be put through the mill. So that was slightly unsettling. Essentially, the traffic never stops around here and B's been out for a walk this morning and she thinks it's like the most beautiful little town there's a lovely Lido down the road she's read all about the mountains up here which she'll fill you in on soon and the citadel which she's going to take the kids today I'm working here and there is electricity points you've got to pay pay by the hour but there is electricity here if I need it should this tree be shadowing uh, our solar panels all in all great park up for the day perhaps the worst place to stay overnight let's end on a high. Here's a shot of a mountain. So the second that one motorhome leaves a camping car space, it's filled with a non-camping car vehicle. Just like this tool here who's parked so close to the service station that along with this tool here means that vans the size of ours can't possibly reverse into this well-guarded service spot. Merci beaucoup, mes amis. Thankfully, the service point here was nice and modern and didn't require tokens from the local Marie's office. As you can see, it takes card payments and contactless. You simply choose your language and notch up the hours you need. Over to B, who's been looking at this mountain. So this is the Rocha de la Baume. I might be pronouncing Baume wrong, I'm not sure, but here's a fact for you. Fact number one. So these vertical strata, they result from limestone deposits that have been left in the late Jurassic Sea. I can't remember the name of the sea. So if they were horizontal deposits left at the bottom of this late Jurassic Sea and they're now vertical, I'm presuming that means that they've been pushed together over millions of years by all the plates moving around when of course all the continents were formed. So it's gone from this and sediments building up all the way to this and these vertical strata. So they underwent another folding, so folding means they're kind of like pushing together or pushing apart. They underwent another folding during the introduction of the Alps. Fact number three. So at the moment, 
this mountain is a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. It was like this and it's gone and it's been squished together and stuff. And if you had to work out how old the rock was, you'd have to unpick it all and lay it out flat and put it in the right order again. Therefore, piecing together your jigsaw puzzle. Next fact, fossils only live in sedimentary rock. And because it's a sedimentary rock, they're able to date it, basing, basing it on the index fossils that they can find. That's how geologists date the strata in this mountain. They look at the ammonites that they can find within it, and those certain ammonites only existed during particular periods in the past. That's how you can date a mountain that's built from sedimentary rock. Come on, it's Daz's facts now. Yeah, one tiny, it's not even a fact. Just something we read last night about um, the date of this bank holiday they had yesterday here and the uh, function of this area during the war. And I think due to occupation, they tried to bomb a couple of the bridges. We didn't know where they did that. And, they, and although the British, I think, tried it and failed because of weather conditions and accidentally bombed the church and killed a congregation of 100 people or something, a couple of days later, the French actually came along and bombed those very same bridges. And just looking down towards um, the mountain over there, we spotted what looked like kind of stone buttresses that, that probably would have come across here as the bridge. Being as this is a pinch point, this would have been a natural place to have built a bridge. So perhaps those are the foundations of what was the bridge that was bombed. I it's... think you're right though, because also here there is a tomb and it's for the 15th of August, which was yesterday? Yes. I believe so. Uh, for the 15th of August, there's a tomb here, so that kind of links in with the fact that it's near the bridge and potentially near where those people were killed in the, yeah, in the church. You think about how much history is lost. We're very, I mean, in a way, they're lucky not to have lost their citadel walls up there or the beautiful quaint streets down there. So there um, is quite a lot lost to 1944 yeah, bombings, it's really actually, and it's been rebuilt in the 1960s, which we're going to go and explore later on. Well, unbelievable, really. You can just see behind me. We've just come back from filming something up the top and someone, and a lady and their family had just parked right over the service stop. So in the best English we could do, or best French we could do, I should say, we've just told her it's not for parking. And she's sort of begrudgingly moving her car. Unbelievable. I think we'll leave a review and hopefully the mayor of the town, the Marie, will see and hear uh, the difficulties that us campers are having in this spot. Unbelievable. So I've given the kids a really long history lesson about the mountains and about the war. And now we're going into the town. And I walked it earlier with Sammy and it was freezing this morning. I had trousers and a t-shirt on and I had goosebumps. So you know you're getting close to the mountains when it feels like that. But now it's getting hotter and hotter and it looks like it's gonna be another 34 degrees by 4 p.m. He's moved location. He's turned it from a Simpsons cafe to an American diner. So we're going to go and see if there's some sticker books in this uh, cute little corner shop. Having just seen uh, another motorhome struggle to get into the service area thanks to all the cars, I've got an idea. Yeah. Stick an exclamation mark on there or two. Parking card? Forbidden. So there we go. Let's uh, stick an exclamation mark on that. So there we go, bring that printer had another use. Instant signage. Well, there we go, there's a first draft. Semi-official looking. I reckon a couple of those stuck on posts and maybe one under the windscreen of the tool who's parked right next to the service station might help. There we go, just doing my bit. Sign one, and just in case they don't see that coming in, sign two. So, a uh, very nice pharmacist, some infant paracetamol bought. We've got paracetamol in tablet form but we haven't got a syrup and that was only two euros forty because when you're seven years old you often wake up with growing pains and leg aches and all sorts I know I certainly did the poor old phoenix last night had tummy ache and he kept us awake from about 1am and then of course we had the lovely people emptying the bottles in the bottle bank at four uh, so we're all feeling a little bit tired but at least I've got the syrup now 
and uh, hopefully that will help him if he's got aches and pains at night time in the future. <laughs> Yeah, to follow the arrows, boys. Well, the kids have just spotted the new Lido. Well, the entrance fee, which is nominal, about seven euros for an adult and three euros for a child. Uh, and actually, I think as the more child children that enter, the cheaper it becomes, a bit like the Mont Blanc tickets we just ordered. It only came in at about 13 euros, but it's worth it just for this spectacular view. And you can see which sections have been replaced in the 1960s after the 1944 bombings. <laughs> So this is a dungeon of the prince. We've just gone past the servants' quarters. It's very claustrophobic. Ooh. Whoa, look at the big bell. Whoa. <laughs> Sometimes known as the gateway to Provence due to its position in a narrow gap either side of mountain ridges, Sister Ron has some devastating history highlights such as being ravaged by the Saracens and losing two-thirds of its population to the plague in the 1500s. On the 15th of August 1944, a World War II French bomber accidentally dropped several bombs on the town, causing a hundred fatalities, destroying a church and seriously damaging the beautiful citadel. Sister Ron is also on the Napoleon Road, a historic route the Emperor took in 1815 on his return from exile. From this aerial position, we've just spotted the merging of these two rivers. That's an example of how different sediment and things and how um, they don't mix particularly quickly. They get to about here and they start to take on the cloudy sediment of this river. So Felix is in prison with the prince and it, what a comfortable prison we just observed. Even space for his servants downstairs. And as always, we found the toilet. into the chapel which is definitely one that looks like it's been rebuilt. I spotted this one from the top with these beautiful stained glass windows. So after being restored in 1935 it was nearly destroyed in 1944 and you can see between the years of 1970 and 1980 it's gone through a whole renovation and I really feel these stained glass windows certainly have a late 70s early 80s feel to them. But I really like them. And now it's used as an exhibition space and bookshop. But every year they have a mass which, was, which took place yesterday to remember the victims of the Second World War. So we've just left the chapel and I saw a girl trying and sampling a fruit that's growing on the side of the citadel and it's grapes. Yes. A death trap. A death trap. Ooh. Now why is this called the Devil's Sentry Box? Is it because it wasn't created by man and it was created by nature? That's close, B. According to the net, the master mason sold his soul to the devil to construct it, although it could have formed as part of glacier flows a squillion years ago. This is called a zigzag drawbridge and it was restored in 2021. 
and we were just looking at what a typical drawbridge would look like and then looking at the, the zigzag or Z shape that they've got here. You can see how it would work with the weights and the joints here. And look who's hiding in the moat. A little cat. So we finished in the castle and it's definitely becoming baking hot. I'm looking forward to 4 p.m. and it gets to 34. But yes, we, we did the citadel and now out of the, out of the citadel straight into Aquabranche. Now the little old deer who parked in that space there has just turned up and walked off. There seems to be some comments pointing towards sign number two. Let's hope that keeps that free for later when we need it. Sometimes I don't know where these guys get it from. I have absolutely no adventurous spirit like this. I'm not interested in hanging in the trees and putting myself in life risking situations. But all three of them seem to enjoy it. Are you okay? No, darling, okay, don't worry, don't worry. They're so high, it's giving me neck ache to look up at them. It's five o'clock, Daddy's finished work and he's coming to join us at the Lido at Sisteron. And it's the hottest part of the day, four till five. So it's the perfect time of day to go and cool off in some water. So these are the steps that will take you to the different parts of the town of Sisteron. So there were four different parts of the town, including the center, the coste, the rue, and the bourg Renard. And you had to get to them via steps. This one is 78 steps. Sisteron is probably my new favourite town. I definitely like Carignac. That stays in my mind as the beautiful Disney real town. <laughs> Whereas this, there's just something for everybody. It's very beautiful. I love the geology of the place. I love the history with the citadel. I love the fact that they thought of the children. So we were able to access the Achel branch today. And of course, we've got this fantastic Lido that we're going to now. Um, so really there's so much to do there's so much to do so you can wander around these streets and go into all the little boutiques and the shops and get your tourist knickknacks and gifts there's some nice eateries but once again Indy and I were stung by the fact that you eat between 11 and 2 sometimes 3.30 and beyond that the kitchen's closed and we saw several vegan burgers today and we decided to hold fire until after our tree climbing experience I don't know where anybody's gone and we thought we'd wait until after our tree climbing experience to eat, but of course, everything was closed there. And we really shot ourselves in the foot, really unlucky. But we've learned our lesson now. You have to eat at lunchtime, it's very disciplined. When you've been on the go all day and it hits five o'clock, sometimes all you want to do is sit down, but in this baking heat, water is what you want to do. You want to dunk yourself in some water. And we've had to drag the teenager kicking and screaming with us, because I think he quite happily, after a day of culture, history and adventure in the trees he's probably going to want to settle down but no he's coming with us this is absolutely fantastic what an amazing facility and it's all free now what they say about cold water swimming come on how's your well how's your well-being now they're all playing let's slip on the algae. Please don't break your bones. Yeah, they need to commit to cleaning that. So I don't think there are any municipal lidos that can boast a rock formation like this on one side of the lido and a citadel on the other side of the lido. And that's a pretty good lido if you ask me. So we've almost finished a sister one. And I'm actually really sad. Just spent just under 24 hours here and I think out of all the towns that we visited it's definitely on my top two 
I'm really sad to go actually. I'll be back. But this weekend the mountains await us. Well that's it, that's the end of Cicero. And we're now uh, heading north again. We're doing about an hour and a half drive. We're gonna speed it up this time by going on the toll road because I've probably been around all of France's roundabouts last night and it's hard on stamping and it's hard on the driver. So we're making this one easy. Well, that's all for this vlog, but don't dash off. Don't forget to leave us a comment, a like or subscribe and look out for more adventure in our next video. Until our next escape, thanks for watching.